Welcome everyone, Byron White here, and have a couple minutes. We're going to start probably about one minute actually. Um, while uh, we're waiting for a few more people to show up, I'm just going to uh, give you a couple of a uh, couple of rules of, of the road that might be may or may not be helpful. Uh, so let's uh, let's start from the top in about ten seconds, and I'll walk you through the the rules so we can. Uh, we can delete everything I just recorded, <laughs> so we can uh, start again. So here we go. Let's let's take it from the top. So, welcome everyone to the monthly content marketing webinar. It's actually uh, the 28th webinar uh, that I've run in a row here in a series that's been fantastic. Um, I'm here today with Cliff Pollen, the CEO and co-founder of Visible Gains, and um, I'm going to walk you through sort of uh, making the case for video marketing and then making it work. Um, and uh, we have a lot of uh, fans that, are, of course, are, are diving in, and I appreciate everybody attending and coming back, particularly the, the fans of Idea Launch. Thanks for that. Um, and I wanted to sort of leave uh, particularly some of the, the newer folks coming in with uh, some of the challenge that, have I, that I've heard um, through, the, through my illustrious uh, uh, career and talking with clients, and that is how to make the case for, for video marketing. What are the stats? How can we get them all on a compact 10, 10 or so slides to really make a good case for, for what's happening out there with, with some of the later and greater information that's been published on, on where, where the industry is going. So I'm going to walk you through some of those stats so you can hopefully make a case to get some funding for video. Um, and then we'll turn it over to Cliff that's going to walk you through a pretty good guide on, uh, an amazing guide actually on on um, not just tips, but really what's happening in the industry. That's what's interesting about about what, what Cliff is going to talk about and, and some of the elements of personalization that I think we're going to have some interesting discussion on today and maybe why video is so popular, why it's so effective, and why, why we're seeing such dramatic results. So I'm really excited about uh, what, what Cliff is going to do for us there. And, and um, he's got a, a big deck, but an important deck, so he's going to spin through it um, fairly quickly and then get to some of the super juicy stuff that I'm really uh, pumped about for you guys to, to listen into. So uh, without further ado, um, let's just, uh, I'm going to walk through uh, a quick sketch here of what is happening with content marketing and what it means and what it is and why it's so relevant and important. Um, I'm then going to go over some facts and some figures to help you make the case, as mentioned, and then uh, Cliff's going to dive in with tips to really make it all work. Um, so content marketing, what's happening out there? Um, there is a revolution happening, and I like defining content marketing as the art of listening to the wants and needs of your customers, which is probably the single most difficult thing for anybody to do. Um, this is going to, I, I, I firmly believe that we are going to see some major breakthroughs with listening to customers' wants and needs and analyzing more about what their personal needs are, uh, with re related, of course, to your products and services, but even less related to your product, products and services, and more related to the to the advancement of their careers and their uh, and, and and filling the voids of, of things they're interested in. Um, and I think that's the connection point, and that's where we really need to strengthen ourselves is is learning to listen to what those wants and needs are, um, and then uh, and then and, and then of course the next phase of content marketing, the science of delivering those needs and wants back to them in a compelling way. And right now, we, we can see a snapshot of, of the portfolio um, that you really need now to be successful. Um, and of course, video is in that portfolio, but th there is not uh, one element to the portfolio. It isn't just blogs or tweets or Facebook posts. Um, it's assets. It's content assets, really. That's what you need to be successful, and, and an asset needs to add value. It's, of course, catching readers orbiting at high speeds. So that's the trick these days. Um, great book that I would reference called um, Bit Literacy that I read some time ago that really transformed the way that I think about communication now. But um, we need to, to think hard about how we're connecting with people. And it's not just on-site. It's, of course, off-site. It's with mobile. You're going to see some stats today about mobile. Um, and it's, it's, it's just very simply getting, getting creative. Um, but of course, the focus needs to be information that your customers want and need, um, and what is what does that look like? You know, it certainly downloads, but if it's information they want and need, and they start sharing it with other people, that's a good sign. It means you're creating the type of information that they want and need, and they're even recognizing friends and associates and business colleagues that may also have the same need that they do. 
Um, and I like saying, you know, uh, when I speak at conferences, that likes are very possibly the new links, and that's really what's happening right now um, in the uh, in the marketplace. That's what we're beginning to see is that um, likes are in fact the new links, and, and Google is paying very close attention to what's happening in the social sphere. Um, and of course, repeat repeat visitation, all kinds of fun stuff. So. Um, and of course, testing is, is a critical. I was speaking at Conversion Conference um, last week in a, in a solo session that I've done about three, three or four sessions in a row now with them in both the West Coast and the East Coast. And um, I offer this, this wonderful uh, sort of content marketing workflow that is, always gets rave, rave reviews. Um, testing has a place with content marketing, but it's, it's not the, the single landing page any longer really cannot be the focus of, of really good testing campaigns. You've got to look at the entire cycle. You've got to look at, at, the, at the content assets you're creating, the engagement factor. Um, you've got to look at certainly uh, segmentation of even arriving on pages and what you're doing with your home page. Uh, Geo-targeting is, for me, probably the most exciting part of what's happening with, 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 with testing and bringing more relevance and more, more of a local feel into, into even products and services that you're offering. Um, and of course, there are some great testing platforms out there that allow you to see what other people are seeing about your website through through tests, where you can really do some some cool stuff. And of course, of course, content testing it fits into that as well. Um, but the key with it all is is finding the most efficient path to engagement. And um, and I know Cliff's going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, some of the elements of, of personalization very much fit into this um, this analysis of the engagement path. Um, and in bringing people through, you know, the, the trial phase and into the actual conversion, uh, we do that in, in Salesforce right now. As you sign up for this webinar, you came into our funnel. We saw who you were. Um, As one of my reps analyzed what you're doing, we, we could see if you're a repeat uh, for a webinar, if you're downloaded other assets. I mean, it's just getting very granular. Um, the key is we don't want to bother people or our, our cold call to them if they're not interested in our products and services. So we have to test that, you know, and, and that's how we really do it. You know, we, we might send you an email of, you know, uh, an asset that relates to something we sell, and if you therefore download it, then we know that, that you we're on the right track um, and that you might, in fact, be interested in one of our services. So that, that pathway is, 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 is not as hard as going out buying a massive solution to do that. You can do that on your own. You just need to be smart with how you set it up and, and build silos of, of prospect customers and, and use a database intelligently to, to really make it all work. So um, the workflow that I spoke about um, is, is really what, what I've been concentrating on in, in my efforts with content marketing. And that's just educating people in this, what I believe is, is a six-step process. Um, and that starts with content planning and in creation, optimization editing, distribution, and of course performance measurement. So you know, these are the, the, the key elements to content marketing and video certainly fits into all of these elements. Planning video and creating it and optimizing it and editing it and distributing it. You know, any one of the elements, whether it be a blog post, an asset um, that you're creating, they all need to follow the same pathway to, for it to be successful. Um, and the most exciting pathway, of course, is the performance measurement, but you really don't, you can't claim uh, you know, any stake in performance unless you're setting up the goals and the planning process. So all of these things are critical for the whole workflow, and I encourage you to, d to dive deeper into these things and look at some of the assets that I've created that you can easily download. So, um, so making the case, you know, so clearly, you know, if you look at the, the total number of searches completed, in fact, YouTube is number two, um, which is really remarkable. Obviously, we all know Google's number one, but um, that's just outstanding to me, and, and you know, remarkable to, to really think think about that. Um, with so much, so many searches going on, um, you know, with, with video, it's remarkable that more companies aren't engaged in it. But let's look at some of the facts. So, you know, it looks, you know, according to this this wonderful data that I pulled up from the the Web Video Marketing Council, a great website down there. You can see uh, webvideomarketing.org. They have some great uh, surveys they've done and great information on that site. I highly encourage you to take a peek. Um, the net of it is, um, it looks, you know, it looks like there is a pretty large audience. Seventy percent, um, you know, is the marketing mix of people that have or have applied and used video um, in marketing efforts. I actually see I got the fifty percent on the top. In fact, seventy percent. Um, and, and, and a lot of other people considering video, 
um, and very few people, only 10% of the people are not, you know, uh, putting video to work. So pretty high stats of people that are using video. Um, email marketing to me is pretty interesting. I get a lot of spam. Um, one of our properties, Life Tips, has been around forever. I don't see, you know, videos coming in 50% of the emails that are coming at me. Um, but, you know, according to this survey, you know, have you ever used video in email marketing 50%? I mean, maybe I'm believing that, but it is a pretty staggering statistic if you think about it. Um, I'm just not seeing a lot of video in the emails I'm getting, but I wanted to show the stat to you there. Um, you know, is video improving click-through rates? This I, I do believe. Um, when I get a video, it is so unusual, it is so different. I am intrigued to see what it's all about, depending upon how it's presented to me. Um, but, you know, it, it does make you think twice about the importance of video, even in email marketing. Um, is, is video influencing the buying decision? Absolutely. You know, um, we, we all know that. We're going to hear more of that and look over some of these stats. But pretty staggering, 73% more likely to purchase or convert um, if video is featured. Um, I'd like to learn if that's a single page average or what that is, but, you know, obviously didn't have time to dig too deeply into this survey that was done. Um, you know, and what's the best practice with video in email? Um, and it looks to me like a majority of the people are sending links to a video landing page, which, which obviously makes sense. It's all kinds of compression issues and, you know, the video player embedded in the email, you know, 33%, that's pretty, pretty solid. Um, it is hard to configure that though, and it's hard to make that work. And and you know there are, there are definitely some challenges. I know for us certainly. Um, so that should be something to consider. So the one stat I was digging and took me a long time to find is okay, business executives. And here, um, you know, this this data is, is more in line with lead generation. You know, what are business executives you know doing? How are they using video? And this is pretty staggering. You know, 75% of video executives are are using video, um, and uh, you know, in a, in a pretty staggering percentage, you know, of even 20% are viewing videos daily, right? So that's pretty impressive if you think about it, um, particularly for those of us that are in the lead gen world and, and providing services, you know, that, that's a pretty, pretty cool stat. Um, so I've got lots of stats here. Um, I just, just, just took a couple more slides to just roll them together for you. I wanted you, again, to have a nice deck of, of 10 slides to to take with you um, and, and pass around, um, but you know, pretty pretty staggering, um, particularly the, uh, the the retail play. Of course, I mean that's where a lot of these stats are really coming from now. Is is how is the retail industry using video? What is its influence? And no surprise that you know products are cold things, videos are warm things. Um, you know, the retail world can really warm up the whole sales process and almost make you feel like you're in a store by videoing something in a store. Um, so that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but what is, it is equally as staggering is the, is the Forrester data that came out in January 2010, a while ago. Um, and remember that Google's gone through so many algorithms, it'd be nice to get an update from Forrester on this. But you know, you're more likely to be on the front page of Google 53 times if you are using video, and op with, with, of course, optimized video as the footnote on that. Um, I don't know where we are in post Panda, but I know Google has paid a lot of attention lately to time on site. Um, I think we've got another stat on that that we're going to take a look at in um, increasing uh, the time on site. So, you know, lots of data. You guys can look it all over um, yourself and, and take a peek. Um, and, uh, you know, the net of it is um, lots of good data. Um, more Forrester data here. Email click through rates two to three times with, with, with video. Um, that actually showed video. Um, another senior executives, 59% would prefer to watch videos instead of reading text. Interesting. Um, so again, lots of good data. Um, and uh, without further ado, I want to pass things over to Cliff that can offer, uh, as a guru and an expert in this topic area, um, a lot more detailed information to you on, um, on uh, what this whole video marketing world is all about. Over to you, Cliff. Thanks, Byron. Um, so let me add a little more data that fits into what Byron's talking about here. Um, so one of the things we look at, and this is a business buyer piece, that your potential buyers are 
70% through their decision process before they ever engage with a sales rep. So from a marketing perspective, we think a lot about how do you engage that buyer. Um, and you know, traditionally, um, we, have, um, we have been using this, right? And we've used it wonderfully. The Gutenberg Press, you know, um, you know, almost 600 years old. And we've used it to communicate an, a phenomenal job. And it will always be there. But one other piece to remember is the question of how do people learn? So we went off and looked at statistics of how can they remember your message? And it's probably not surprising when we think about all of the work that's been done around sort of TV ads. But the basic piece to think about here is on the left is the people who learn best by written language. And that's 30%. If you actually accumulate the other ones, what you might call rich media, so we'll talk a little bit more about video, but video doesn't have to just be a person on screen. It can be an image and a voiceover. So almost 70% of the people learn better when you use a rich media format. So as marketers, we're always thinking about communicating and sharing, but we also want people to remember. So a critical reason to do it is it's a way that people are going to remember better. So if you use, quote, video, and I use video in quotes here, and we'll talk more about that, um, you're basically using a format that even the written people absorb incredibly well, as will everybody else. The other piece to this is that video, and, and Salesforce has done a study where they're watching the consumption of video, and they're basically saying there are things we need to communicate that our sales reps normally spend time communicating that we have people watching basically online and then taking the time of our reps to discuss it. And that's been so effective for them that they've sort of equated the number of views to what they call a hyper-effective rep. So they're seeing enormous productivity gains by creating those video assets and seeing people, you know, some of Byron's statistics, consuming those. So another sort of, you know, sort of adding a little bit to the facts before we jump into the, the, some of the tips and hows is even further down the, the buying decision process where people have sort of sales teams. And this gets to the part of, well, what should I do in video? And the thing to, to think about here is it's great to put people on camera. You're putting a face to your organization. You, you know, you're giving it a personality. Text is rich, can communicate a lot, but often seeing somebody, hearing them, feeling that genuine nature gives the company a face. The other piece is that images do a wonderful job of communicating. So many of you may remember later on after this, the big red brain that I showed and that people are 70% of the way through. So you don't have to think of video as, you know, sort of traditional commercial pieces. It can easily be um, somebody on camera or it can be an image with a voiceover. All of those work. It can even be a screen capture of your product. So there's, there's different ways to do it, and using those different formats can be very effective. What I want to touch on then is where to use video. And the simple piece, sort of if you think about Byron's content sort of map in six steps are, think about where it's going to help you the most. So I always think about where would I get a high payoff with a little bit of effort. So let's start at the top of the funnel for a second and we can walk through other parts of the funnel. So quite simply, one easy way is we're all looking to get more people to consume our content. So you may be promoting a new um, what ebook that you've done or a new study that you've done. You can send out an email with that you can also send a little 15 or 20 second sort of video clip 
that will talk about the benefits and why that study was created and maybe even has the author talk about that. It doesn't have to be the author. You can do it to promote a webinar and we're seeing enormous results there. When you think about the nurturing process, you can easily use it to, you know, on the far right, share a customer success story, written or great, seeing somebody talk about their experiences are wonderful. You also can do it to sort of get into the more, you know, product and solution pieces on a site. And then we're seeing it used all throughout the sales process, both from sort of getting a first meeting um, to follow-ups to actually people doing video riders on their proposals very effectively. So let's take a look at some examples of how things are used. I will work to play some videos. Um, one of the things I'll say is that um, you'll, you'll see a little bit of choppiness on GoToWebinar. I just want you to have a feel for what it is. If anybody wants links to these, they can easily sort of send me an email uh, at cliff at Visible Gains. One of the other things I'll mention is if any of you wants to take the learning study that I said before, if you don't know your learning style, by the way, it's a wonderful thing to sort of learn, is to understand how you learn best. Um, and and it, it may help you, you know, so uh, we can, there's a link on the page I sent to the Suzanne Miller. If you need it, you can obviously also send me an email and I'll email you the, the link. So coming back, top of funnel. Let me use a case of building engines. And building engines um, is about a 40-person company, and they provide solutions to building owners to help them manage their relationships with both vendors and tenants. Um, Sarah Fisher, who you see here, basically runs um, through partners, both for top and mid funnel, a series of thought leadership sort of webinars. And her goal was to try and increase the attendance at those webinars. So let me sort of show you um, a little bit of what this might look like. So to Byron's point, um, in an email where content was being promoted, Sarah added this piece right here. She created a little video that was a watch preview. So this email came and you could either hit register now or you could watch the preview. Both of those would take you to a landing page where you could then register or watch the video. And I'll we'll play the video here for a second. So Sarah goes on, she'll come back on screen, and she'll basically ask people to register. Very simple. She's on screen for about 15 seconds, just introducing herself, a picture of the speaker, the benefits you get from attending. So let me come back here a second, and you'll see um, what Sarah got was a doubling in her click-through rate. She 4 x her signups when she did this. That is obviously extraordinary. Um, more likely, we're seeing people who are up 25, 50% in their signups. And her engagement score was much higher than she had ever gotten before. She regularly does this when she's doing events, and it's had a benefit that it has now given another face to the company. So one of the reasons to think about something as simple as adding it to some of your email campaigns to promote events is because it's an easy way to get an uplift with a, with a very small amount of work. I'd mention real quickly, there's also versions where you don't put anybody on camera and you just voice over the images. So any of those techniques can easily work and when you're thinking about email as the delivery component, 
there's lots of different best practices to follow, whether it's promoting a piece of content, whether it's, um, whether it's an invite for a virtual event, physical event, whatever it may be. One of the other things to think about in video, so we're at top of funnel, we're now moving into sort of mid-funnel. When you think about mid-funnel, you think about not the crowd. Now you're trying to talk to me and my specific needs. And so you're talking to that person sitting in that little red seat, um, in this case at Fenway Park. So not the crowd, but how do you make everything personal and relevant to me? And we know it's been about that experience. And I'd point you down here to the right, because there's a very simple concept that we often miss. That when video moved to the web, video could be interactive whether it was choose your own experience or your, <clears throat> excuse me, or, or your own adventure, um, you have an opportunity not to have to do um, the Gone with the Wind production, but to do short clips where the viewer can select what to watch and they can move themselves th through a process. And that's a very important concept. Let me show you a quick example of ways to do that where you're thinking about speaking to me and letting me decide what I want to see. So this is an example of doing that um, with um, Sales Genie. So this is Sales Genie's home page. And they have people coming into that home page and they, they do an introduction with a person and then we'll see a little bit of a problem solution piece come up. So I skipped forward and now we're a minute in and they're summarizing you now have a problem solution piece, but now they're going to let each viewer select what they may want to do. So if you think about this from a funnel perspective, their particular products, you may buy a business to business list, you may want to know more about consumers, you may be interested and then you want to move further down the funnel and here a customer talk about how it may have the problems they faced and how it worked and then you may want to jump and do a uh, you know um, a free trial or book a meeting so right here would be a video customer testimonial which I won't play these are all videos or I might want to go in and, and and you'll see the stats some people are moving all the way through the funnel by watching two or three clips and then basically going in to book a meeting right here into a sales rep's calendar. So the point about that is that, that experience again of thinking about let the viewer go as far as they want. And here's an example of that. So people who watched, they had a very high percentage who watched that first clip and 67% of them then watched a product demo. They've got 23% who are either taking a trial or meeting. So they're moving a set of people all the way through the funnel and just educating another set. It's up to the viewers what they watch, but they're moving things along sort of very quickly. So that's a good mid-funnel example and a good example of personalization and breaking down your production. Little trick there, the shorter your stuff is, the easier it is to produce, the easier it is um, for the viewer to select something, watch a little bit, go back and see what else they want to watch. So um, let's now move sort of to the bottom of the funnel where you may have somebody who has been marketing qualified, you're creating these video assets and the important thing to remember like all content is it can be used by the sales team. So this is an example um, and I'll, I'll describe how it was done. Um, this is um, 
time trade, they were working to break into a retail account, and they had actually spent a very long time, almost a year, trying to break in. They decided to take one of their videos, personalize sort of the email, and sent it off, and described specifically how they could help that customer. And that person, there was a voicemail left, said, please watch the 60-second video. They watched the video. They immediately sure the video was shared with 10 other people. They had a meeting booked in 10 days, and they closed the deal in 90 days. This was after a year of trying to break in with lots of other methods. So in this particular case, the concept of sort of a very short, specific about, you know, how they may help, understanding that client's specific needs um, really worked for them. So again, another way to sort of think about, um, you know, video uh, in that. The other piece I want to show there is a, is a different, um, you know, sort of um, video. Um, and that's just, it's marketing has qualified the lead, and here is a sales executive just saying, thanks for visiting. If you have any questions, please let me know. So he talks about what he's put together, and again, then he's giving that prospect a choice to basically learn about a series of things or have a demonstration. So again, trying to share stuff, you may have some information about what that prospect wants, but you're not personalizing the video. You're, you're not customizing, you're, you're letting them personalize it by letting them have the choices whether this was a thought leadership piece you wanted to put in here. And remember, you don't have to put all video in video. You may want to link to other things. That's the beauty of having interactivity in the new video world. And I say new, I realize it's, it's not that new, but that concept is very important that not everything has to be video. You can be linking to other things just like we're linking to calendars. So we're at that bottom of the funnel, you end up, again, with an enormous set of opportunities to take assets you've created, let them be shared. And video is a wonderful thing. The other, as, as we saw with time trade here, if you can do a three or four minute sort of set of videos that the users can choose, then if I'm that person you're selling to, I can share that off with everybody and say, why don't you take three or four minutes and take a look at these videos. It's going to discuss how time trade could help us with our specific problem. Or it's going to help you understand how a Tivio may help. And we've also seen people then use that in advance of a second meeting to educate a set of people who are coming to the meeting and actually encourage them to come by getting a little bit of content that they find relevant and interest them so they come to that meeting sort of actively ready to participate as opposed to feeling that they were dragged in. So again, the results of time trade, which we just saw, were the stakeholders being engaged, time to the first meeting, and, um, and a close. In continuing the dialogue, think of it that you've now basically had a first meeting and you're trying to advance the conversation, sort of the scenario I was just discussing. So you can include another set of content, which may, in this case, um, you'll see some fairly technical content that's being used to get another set of people up to speed, a little more detail. These are chalkboard talks, and those chalkboard talks are being used to draw in some of the technical people. That content can be reused in a lot of places, even in customer support. So you're thinking about your video in uh, Byron's map. Where am I creating assets? Where can I use them? And where should I distribute them? Um, the, 
final sort of um, it, an example is to think about video um, in the context of actually proposals. We haven't seen a lot of people do this. Um, Schwartz did it very effectively. So what they were doing um, was creating a set of video assets to accompany a proposal. It showed the team. It talked about the particular expertise they had with that client. What they found was that you know we've all seen the 40-page proposals coming back. That a set of short videos was getting barely, very heavy traffic, being watched, being shared within the organization. In their case, they actually attributed it to almost a doubling in their close rate over text-based proposals only. So it took them some investment because they were customizing some of that content, but they had a general set and then a customized set. Whether that's a place you want to start or not, depending where you are in the process, you can decide. But the concept basically here is to, is to think about video up and down the funnel. So where do we get started? Um, this is a little bit, you know, we saw some stats of people sort of actively using video. Um, sometimes people have done one when I've seen them, and they'll answer yes to that question but they'll be terrified from their experience. It was really expensive. It was really hard. Um, you know, I, as soon as it was done, I couldn't change it. Lots of those things have changed now. So if you've suffered some of those things, I would suggest that you, you, know, you sort of think about um, some of the newer ways to basically um, make that, you know, take advantage of it. So here you are on the diving board, and you want to get started. If you haven't done video before, just grab a camera and think about trying something. Each of you probably on this call, I'm sure that with this group, we have a very high percentage of people that are carrying smartphones that have high quality HD cameras. Something like the Kodak camera, which is 100 bucks, shoots wonderful high definition. You can actually edit on the camera and you get wonderful sort of you know um, content and this this you know this Kodak is about under hundred and fifty dollars so you know if you have one and you say to yourself boy I'm just going to try something I'm going to try to to you know capture video and I often say go home interview your kid, interview your spouse, interview your friend, ask them two questions, learn how to even just interview somebody. So the next time that you're at a trade show or you hold an event, you learn how to basically capture the answer to a question that you might include on a blog post. Um, you might include it in a tips and techniques piece you're doing. So you might go to one of your engineers if you're at a software company. You might go to um, one of your professional services people. If you're in a store in a retail business, you can go talk to a customer. And just capture a little video and see what that feels like. And be ready that the first one, you know, you'll sort of throw away. But you should, just like you're willing to pick up a pencil and write, you should feel really comfortable with a camera. It's really simple now. We have suggestions around mics and other things. And what's implicit here is, you know something? You can do a bunch of this yourself. Yes, you, there are great outside production companies that you can use. And we've got a whole sort of network that, that we're part of where there's outside people um, that can produce it. Um, but there's lots of stuff you can do yourself. These are examples of different sort of microphones that you can use. An entire kit is probably under $500 for a really good camera, mics. And if you want a light, you can, you can have a light. And you are set for stuff that five years ago would have cost $25,000. Um, you can get some easy software to capture things if you're you know, in the technology world, to capture screen captures, very simple to do to capture images, and to start creating you know, some content. So getting equipped isn't hard. And um, there's, there's just so many different ways to get started. And that's, I, I would give you sort of three tips on getting started. 
One is the interview clip. Um, we have tips and techniques on our site on how to do an interview. The thing many of you may have watched TV interviews taking place, like I always use the 60 Minutes example because you often don't see the producer and you hear the answers to the questions. So one of the tips and techniques is when you interview somebody, be quiet when they answer, just let them answer, give them visual clues that you're supportive of them, but be quiet because you want to get a nice clean clip and you're probably not going to be on camera. They're going to be on camera. So um, that's one of those things I say, give that a little practice and you'll be able to capture video clips of customers, of support people, of thought leaders at any point in time and you'll learn how to do that and you will have lots of great content. Another trick is to just do images in voiceover. Grab an image, voice over that image, and then you've basically got a video. Great way to sort of tell a story, but you're not confined to just, you know, doing it with text. And finally, doing things like screencast and capturing. So I'm, I'm using getting started tips here of easy ways to just practice. Be ready, you'll throw the first piece away. That's fine. It's like riding a bike. 99% of us fell the first time we did it. Until you fall, you really can't learn how to do it. So give it a try, um, and, uh, you know, and, and you'll learn from that sort of scrapes. So um, it, let me just say, um, if, you know, it's a good time to start. It increases engagement. So one of the things we didn't, we didn't talk about was the, the time on site, the Ativio that, that I showed Alejandro, um, they tripled their on-site time, a visitor on-site time, by putting more video up. People were staying with those videos. It helps all parts of the marketing and sales cycle, and it's not that hard or expensive. Whether you do it yourself or whether you want to hire some outside people for part of it, um, basically the costs are coming down dramatically as both equipment costs come down and also because we realize, be yourself. Do not hire outside talent. Put your face to the company, um, and you'll see that that builds both the you know the company's persona. It's real. It's not actors, and that really gives you great face. So you know those are the things um, you know we've got in terms of you know getting started. Um, so again. Um, thinking it through, remember that as Byron sort of started, there's great stats, you can touch any part of the funnel, and it's more about getting started and getting some momentum. So Byron, I'll turn it back over to you, and we can probably move to questions. Right. Right on. Uh, really fantastic presentation, Cliff. This, this is really, really good stuff. I personally have about a dozen questions, but let's go to some of the questions that are that are both coming in and have uh, have come in can, into us. So, one of the questions um, that I thought was really interesting was you showed an example of an email um, blast that went out, and somebody notes that you know in the example where the video was on the email and then was featured on the landing page where the form was. Um, in this example, video was on the form. I've seen other reports that video should not be on forms because it lowers conversion rates. They suggest testimonials instead um, you know in, in the survey that was done can you comment on that yeah um, I disagree strongly uh, <laughs> at least um, and I'm coming back up to it if we're on my screen yeah we're on my screen still so across the board um, we're seeing that if you have an event and you put and you put a little video preview on that event it works we have yeah. never seen rates drop off because you've done that. We do put it next to the form. People watch the video and start registering in the form. Mm -hmm. So we think that combination really works well. Mm -hmm. And not to every one of our clients who have done it has said it's working, it works well. We've never seen an issue with it. So I don't I you know I guess based on data that we've got across a lot of customers, um, that that has become a best practice for, for our customers. 
And I'll just chime in there on that one and say that really the only way that you can truly know if your conversion rate will increase and decrease is by A-B testing, you know, right. with and without the video, right? So, you know, my opinion, do the readers, do the listeners' opinion, your opinion, Cliff, it's, it's all about testing, right? But one of the reasons that you also, one of the other things you need to test is the quality of the video, the messaging and the content of the video. Um, uh, clearly, some videos will pull better than others, right? right. Um, and also, Cliff is, is here, here, here talking a little bit about a particular event, right? Well, events are where you're meeting people face to face. The, the event is often the person that is showcasing the event. So naturally, you know, you'd warm that up and make that fuzzy um, with with uh, with with uh, some some uh, you know some some video, right? Would you agree with that, Cliff? I would. And I first of all, I agree. A B test everything. I'm sure there are cases that people will come up with where it, it was worse. You know what I mean? But the the in general, we think it, you know we are seeing it work. So I want to just reinforce your A B test. But um, the other part, uh, you know, is um, make it personal when that's appropriate, because we think that what we're hearing from our clients is all of a sudden people feel an affinity when they're seeing people on camera. Now, yes, if you're dour and you know you're you're not upbeat and energetic, that could hurt. Um, so there are some basic things that you have to think about when you when you do it. And just one more comment on that, because I just can't help myself with this, because you know, just coming back from this conversion conference, and I won't harp on testing, but instead about the video itself, right? So if you're not getting, you know, in general, if you look at a study by eMarketer, uh, May 14th, uh, 2010 study by eMarketer, I think it's also on the Live Clicker site, you know, they contend that um, for retailers particularly, and their, their, their survey was on retailers. If you're not driving your conversion rates up at least 25% with the use of video, then either two things are happening. Number one, the retailer does not know how to produce persuasive video. Um, or number two, the people are not watching the video, which means the retailer is not featuring the video in the way that people actually know that it's there. Right. And let me. Yep. And so when you're testing, you know this. This is the problem. It, the quality of the video, the persuasive of the video, or the video is not being viewed, and therefore you have to wash out the the, the the tests of conversion rate. And it is tricky. And like Google website website optimizer, it's very difficult to know if somebody viewed the video. Google is only really studying the conversion on the page. So it, it's a tricky mess out there to test this stuff. And I want to add one thing to it, or two things real quick, Byron, just to stay on this. Um, short is critical. Mm -hmm. um, so when clients ask us, short, short, short. Um, be concise um, is one um, very important thing. And the other piece is figure out how you can measure it. Get mm -hmm. tools that are going to let you know how far people were engaged so that you can figure out and optimize you know something, we lost a bunch of people 40 seconds into this when we did this. Like everything, you need to learn through measurement, and if there was a problem, you don't want to, you don't want to be sort of um, lost in the forest with the lights out that you have no idea what was really happening in that, in that content, and there's mm -hmm. wonderful ways to measure. So your point on measurement, again, we'll let you Right know. on. OK, we'll give some yeah. other questions a chance sure. here. <laughs> so uh, th and thanks, because it was, but, it, but I think we, we had some really fundamental stuff there. So another question was, um, and, and Cliff, could you talk a little bit about the pros and cons of using Flash as your source for video? Sure. Um, I, you know, I think that we all have to be aware that we need to be mobile ready um, and that we're thinking about people across all of those you know sort of devices whether it's a desktop whether it's a tablet whether it's a phone and for that case we know that Apple is not supporting flash on those devices so you need to have a strategy we believe that covers um, you know the devices and the technology needs to fit that there's some wonderful things that you can do in Flash, and so those are, you know, taking advantage of some of those things are important, 
Um, we clearly believe that HTML5 right now, ha you know, while maybe not as, as, as robust, runs on all of the platforms. So whatever strategy you choose, it's got to fit with the people that you're trying to deliver, you know, to. So, so uh, you know, we think that's, think about where you need to be and whether Flash is in those places so that you can develop a strategy that fits with your, con you know, with the, to your last, uh, your sixth point, I think, Byron, in, in your list of, you know, your distribution, it's got to work on those platforms. Someone wanted to know what the key elements of good, you know, quality video are. So um, we have a concept that, and again, I'll, I'll reflect a little bit B to B versus B to C. Mm -hmm. So let me let me separate that up front. Talk first about sort of B to B. Um, what we have found is it should not be a commercial. Um, in most cases. Um, people start to turn off when it's high production values and they believe that it was overproduced and it's a commercial and they say great I'm getting a commercial great commercial but it's not authentic and real we have a concept that I've written about called business casual video and what we think that means is you know it's not a, you know it's not um, you in a suit and a tie it's how are you authentic so it, most important, sound needs to be good. If I can't hear it, then I'll turn it off. Lighting should be reasonable, and you should look professional, but it shouldn't be overproduced. And spending money overproducing it on high, quote, production values, you might as well just light that money on fire for most of the B2B marketing. Mm -hmm. If you think of the B2C, think of what the Zappo shoes were. If anybody has looked at those, those were not highly produced, you know, sort of pieces. I'm not saying that there aren't for certain B2C areas needs to do high production, but remember there's all the stats about Zappos, you know, having much higher conversion rates because women could see what the shoes look like on their feet. And those things were not high production. So look at what's out there, see how you react, and think about where you want to fit. But I would caution if you find somebody with 35 years of movie making experience who says, I know how to create this, and asks you for a twenty-five dollars or $30,000 budget, I think that it's the wrong thing in today's world. So, you, you know, so that's, you, you know, use yourself as a judge as to what's real for you these days. Feel free to ask some more questions. Anybody uh, will, will feel them, but I have one for you while we're, while we're here. So <clears throat> it, it's, it is a difficult, painful process, Cliff, no matter how you slice or dice it, to conceptualize what you may want to talk about in a video, develop a script and a plan, you know, hire a videographer, you know, or try to shoot it on your own, sort out how to upload this thing. Now we've got new elements like break it up into bite-sized nuggets, make it interactive, all of this makes sense. So this is hard stuff, you know, okay? Um, it's hard for me, and I'm a, I'm a pretty experienced guy doing this stuff. And, and, but, you know, what do you recommend, you know, is the right strategy, either for a company or a corporation, you know, that, that has a marketing team and a marketing department, you know, and or, you know, a, a startup company that, that uh, you know, is, is, is doesn't necessarily have a marketing department, but it but be, is beginning to understand the importance of video and is at least wanting to try and experiment with it. For example, do you go hire a videographer first? Do you hire a writer first and a script person to put a script together? You know, do you, do you, do you, sure. you know, do, do you surf the web and try to find videos you like and say, I want to produce something like this? If so, where do you, so can you, can you walk us through really yeah. some choices we have on how to produce this and what some of the costs might be? Great question, great question. So the first thing that I would do is I would pick something that is low-hanging fruit that you think is relatively easy to do but will have a good payoff. You can also elect to do something that I call off-Broadway. So if you're really nervous, then do a video clip for a blog post, right? 
and just say I'm going to interview some my customer support person or one of my founders on one question. I'm going to write a little blog post around it, and I'm going to put that up. And that will be my first video. Or I'm going to call up, you know, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to go to a conference and I'm going to find somebody, I'm going to ask them one question and I'm going to capture that and create a blog post out of it. So start with, if, if you're really nervous, which is fine, then start with things that are off-Broadway, that are a low investment, that will get you comfortable. On the other side of that, do not start and say, I want to produce the home page video for the company. Um, <laughs> You will, it, you know, getting um, your executive team, your marketing team, your, you know, sales team to agree on messaging and scripts, um, you, that project is dead before it ever starts. And it goes to another point, which is don't script these things. Write a couple of bullets. So my, my, my counsel is, one, if you're in a business where you can do it, we do this all the time, we get customer success stories on video. And we do them by writing down four questions we want to ask our customer. You know, what was the issue you faced? What, was the, what were you trying to achieve? How did you make your decision? And what has it meant to your business? And our fifth bonus question is, how do you see it a year from now. We don't ask all of those questions at once. You ask them one at a time and you coach somebody on doing that. And if you can find a customer that's local to you and do that, you then have five clips and you've created a great customer testimonial and there's no big production issue. It's incredibly simple to do and it has high value. So a long answer, Byron, but the answers are don't go after the hardest things in the world that require group decisions. Try something off Broadway if you want. You know, it could even be a customer support tip that you video. Customer success stories are great. Um, they're not that hard, especially if you break them up to one question at a time. So those are some tips for sort of, you know, and doing an event promotion like Sarah did. Um, mm -hmm. That literally can take somebody, if they don't want to be on camera and they want to do image and voiceover, they could probably do that in 15 minutes. You can throw it in and A-B test it and see if you get a lift up. You know, it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to drive your registrations down. You'll get, in almost all cases, a little bit of a bump, and you'll have that experience. So that's <laughs> another way to sort of get started. Yeah, someone named uh, Diane, thanks Diane, asked a really good follow-up question, that question, and I was going to actually ask the same thing. Could you repeat those wonderful questions for a video testimonial? Those were awesome. <laughs> so if you <laughs> start with what was the issue that you faced? Yeah. It might, yeah. uh, do them real quick. If anybody wants to email me um, and you go to our blog, we've got them up there in our whole help section, so feel free to either go there, email me, and I'll send them. But it's 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 basically um, now you can ask me to do them quickly. No, I know, um, yeah. <laughs> so the um, the the point is, you know, what was the situation you were facing? Um, how did you go about, you know, looking to make uh, how things were going to be better? Now I can't do them anymore, Byron. I'm, 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 right. I'm, you know, they rolled off. Get it I, close. I, It'll be fine. And, and it rolled you know, off your tongue like silk. I will say that. But the last <laughs> one is always, how do you see it a year out? Um, and um, and what was um, what's your experience been so far? Uh, so um, uh, you know, so what was your you know? I'll, I'll stop and start at the top again. So it's basically what was the situation you were facing? Um, how did you go about you know determining what you wanted to do? What has your experience been so far? And how do you see it sort of a year out? So. Uh, Um, I was just going to throw to that. I was writing these down literally as you were speaking, but one of the classic scenarios is just sort of, you know, situation, complexity, and then solution, right? right. So trying to drive some questions around that. You know, what was the situation? You know, when you, when you, you know, what was the problem? You know, what was the situation? 
um, ask some questions around that. You know, what were the complexities? Which yeah. even with the either with the decision making process um, on which you know which you were going to choose, um, and then you know how how was the solution? You know, just go right at it. You know, did 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 it meet the expectations? You know, etc. So that's a classic <laughs> sort of a consulting model approach to to trying to dig into good answers from your customers. And Byron, I want to add one thing or highlight what you said. One of the things in the selling process is that right now, say in the B2B world, 50% of sales are going to no decision. So the question you want to get in there is, when you had to make that decision, what did you struggle with? Because uh -huh. your salespeople want to share how that person overcame that final hurdle in their mind to go ahead as opposed to fall back and do a no decision. So what did you face, you know, when you went to make the decision? What was the most difficult challenge in deciding to go ahead? Mm -hmm. You know, something along those lines we found can be incredibly helpful. I just want to keep asking you questions. This is one more from from me here, but can you comment on video contests? I'm really excited and myself super pumped up with video contests. There's some super platforms out there where you can run a contest, play the winner, you know, pay the winner of the contest a bounty, you know, five thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, maybe mail or ship your products to them and ask them to create really creative, engaging and funny videos. What's interesting about some of the models is you actually own all of the videos and you can use all of the videos to even have your customers vote on which video should win and who should get the five thousand dollars? It's I creative and interesting and engaging. And guess what? It's done by professionals. How fun is that? Can you comment on that? I think it's awesome. So yeah. you know, I think that building community and there's all sorts of and it and it ties Byron to what you were talking about, which is what's your content strategy. So think about the content that you want to get and how that's going to help you for the next twelve months. And so I, I think it's a great thing. We've seen people do it really well um, and getting people to help you create content, rewarding them, you know, with recognition. Sometimes you don't have to give money, you know, that, that's, you know, so don't even think that you have to give big prizes. Um, people often want to do this to, to, you know, be the leader of the community, to add thought to what's going on. So I think mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great thing. Now it takes a lot, it's a big marketing program. So, so make sure you put the muscle behind it when you do it, because I put it on the more major side, but I think it has some major payoffs. Mm -hmm. Well, we're out of time today, and we'll probably be shut off by our fine host uh, we'll go to webinar pretty soon here. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank you, Cliff, for joining uh, this month's webinar. Byron, thank you so much, and thanks, everybody. It was, it was, uh, it was terrific. If you want to go back to your final slide there real quick, um, we would love some feedback on this. For those of you still chimed in here, thank you so much for listening in today. Please send any thoughts to um, either uh, Cliff or my um, Twitter account. would be great. Um, our email address, I'm Byron White. Um, uh, my Twitter handle is Byron White, and I love getting any feedback from these videos on my Twitter account. Please, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, that would super help me if you could. Um, and likewise, please get a hold of Cliff or myself if you have any questions or follow-ups. Note that there will be a link coming to all of you with both a, a download for both my deck and Cliff's deck, um, as well as a link uh, to the video that we'll be uh, broadcasting on on, uh, on Ideal Launch. We have an archive of all of our history of, of our content marketing webinars, so you can dive in and take a look. Um, thanks again for tuning in, everyone. Until next month, I uh, hope your life's a little a little bit better and a little bit more knowledgeable with regards to video marketing. Thanks. We'll see you next month.